In one of my previous videos, I briefly showed you my 3D printing journey, as it's something I love doing both as a hobby and professionally whenever I can. However, 3D printing is only one part of my passion, which is tinkering with electronics and microcontrollers in general. I fell down this rabbit hole back in 2014 while studying electronics engineering. I stumbled upon the Arduino ecosystem and realized I could finally see the results of my code in the real world. So I went ahead and purchased an official Arduino Uno and started looking for minor everyday problems that needed overcomplicated and reliable solutions. Take my first project. I cut the power cord of my filter coffee machine to add a relay module and using a photoresistor made it turn on at first daylight. It worked ok if you ignore the fact that I had to prepare the machine with ground coffee and water the night before. I also couldn't go into the kitchen at night and turn on the lights for a glass of water without accidentally making a coffee. Then later I decided I needed a laser alarm system. I built one using a red laser diode and a mirror on the wall to reflect the beam onto a photoresistor which was incredibly difficult to align. When the beam was interrupted the alarm would go off. But the disarming mechanism couldn't just be a button. It was a security system after all. It needed a unique key like a password. For this system, the key was interrupting the laser beam in a very specific pattern as you can see here. The goal was that if the beam was interrupted in this specific pattern, which was very unlikely for an intruder to replicate by chance, the alarm would disarm. Any other interruption would trigger it. At the time I thought it was brilliant. It even featured an automatic battery backup in case the intruder cut the power. I made that by the way using a P-channel MOSFET and a 9V battery. Of course, there are much more elegant and practical solutions for alarm systems and door sensors, but this one reminded me of all those spy movies. Anyway, fast forward a few years and I learned about the Home Assistant platform with its plugins and automations. At the same time, I also leveled up my microcontrollers to the ESP32 platform with its Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. I immediately started using Home Assistant with the ESP Home plugin to smartify the dumb devices in my house. One of these projects was a liquid level monitoring system to track the diesel in my heater during winter. It featured an ultrasonic sensor connected to an ESP32 module inside a 3D printing enclosure designed to replicate the tank's screw-on lid. The sensor measured the distance from the top of the tank to the diesel surface. Knowing the tank's exact dimensions, I could calculate the remaining diesel volume and the amount burnt each day. The system had to be powered by a rechargeable battery, so I added a lithium-ion cell. These cells also needed a charging and protection circuit, so I added the corresponding module. Furthermore, I had to monitor the battery level and send this information to Home Assistant so I would know when to charge it. Measuring the battery level was much harder than expected. I used the voltage divider to feed the battery voltage into an analog input on the ESP32. But this has two problems. First, it's always connected to the battery, so it constantly consumes a small amount of power, reducing the battery life. Also, it measures voltage, which does not directly correspond to capacity. For example, if the battery voltage drops 10% from its maximum of 4.2 volts, the battery's capacity has not dropped by just 10%. It has actually dropped a lot more. This relationship is shown in this graph of voltage versus capacity. We see that the curve is not linear meaning my voltage measurements were only a rough approximation of the real battery level. Not to mention the battery voltage fluctuates with the applied load and this can be magnified with this measurement method. This pattern kept emerging almost every time I wanted to build a smart device for Home Assistant. Like the time I designed an air quality sensor, a very simple and useful project, if it weren't for the soldering of many different modules, voltage dividers and so on. That's when I had another idea. Maybe I could design my own ESP32 development board with all the features I kept needing on a single board. Maybe I could use a single USB-C port to both program my microcontroller and charge my lithium-ion cell while also protecting it from overcharging, over-discharging and short circuits. And maybe I could reliably and precisely measure its true capacity without draining it, ideally without using up the ESP32's available analog pins. After many costly iterations, I ended up with this. I called it the Sprig, because it helped my projects grow by making them easier to develop and integrate into my smart home. After the Sprig, many branches appeared, modules that group together certain features for specific applications. For example, the Thorn, which is used to control DC loads up to 10 amps and currently powers my studio lights. Check out this video where I show how I made them. Or the SAP, 
which measures the power consumption of my house, or the root, which monitors the status of my plants in detail, tracking soil moisture, air temperature, humidity, and sunlight intensity without ever needing charging. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see this kind of stuff. Seeing that this sprig was very useful to me, I asked the community if they liked the idea. They did, so I made more. I also made it open source so anyone can build it. And I encourage you to do so and improve it. You can find links to the corresponding GitHub repositories in the description. I also opened an online store to sell them for those who don't want to go through the process of manufacturing them. The store is linked below. Purchasing a sprig or any other board supports my work and helps me grow my electronics garden. So, without even realizing it, I created a whole new electronics ecosystem with modules capable of specific functionalities that all accept a sprig on top of them. You could call it the sprig stack ecosystem. Of course, all of this is not new. There are now numerous ESP32 development boards with various features like having BMS, USB-C instead of micro USB, or the ability to charge the battery from a solar cell, which is also possible on the Sprig, by the way, or being incredibly small. But I have yet to find a board that combines battery power, charging, protection, and precision monitoring all in one. And to address the elephant in the room, yes, nowadays it's much easier to create a smart home even without resorting to large companies like Amazon. You can purchase wireless sensors directly from AliExpress. There is no need for soldering, programming, 3D printing, or worst of all, troubleshooting. But maybe there are some benefits to building your own stuff. Easily updating the code, repurposing the hardware or repairing it. Maybe it's time to focus on products that are worth repairing instead of throwing away and designing them with reusability in mind is worth the effort. Or maybe it's just fun making it yourself, I don't know. What I do know is that Espressi for some time now has made a new ESP32, the ESP32C6, and it has great features for a smart home device. It supports the Zigbee protocol as well as Matter and Thread. It also uses Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. The use of Zigbee, which is essentially a mesh network, can eliminate the disconnections that sometimes happen with Wi-Fi smart devices. I recently saw that many manufacturers such as Seed Studio and Shelly are already using the ESP32C6 in their devices, so I decided it was time to upgrade the Sprig. It is also time to thank PCBWay for helping me in this process by funding the manufacture of my first testing batch. I was really impressed with their services, their detailed quotation platform and their excellent customer support. After they helped me fix some design issues, I ordered 10 PCBs and they arrived soon after. As you can see, they arrived very well packaged with plenty of bubble wrap. The PCBs are excellent quality, with all the components perfectly soldered in place. The silk screen and the solder mask also look flawless, although these are just prototypes and the final boards will be white with black silk screen. Check out PCB Way for their Christmas offerings from the link in the description below. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. As you can see, I made the new boards the same size and shape to be compatible with my existing expansion modules. So what are the new features? First of all, the new ESP32 C6 module with all the features I mentioned. The new boards have a NeoPixel RGB LED for smart indications and alerts. I managed to fit an accelerometer and magnetometer for features like shake to wake from deep sleep, although I can't seem to be able to communicate with it. It's the BMI 260 from Bosch a direct replacement of the discontinued BMI-160, which is supported by ESP Home. I first tried to communicate with it using the ESP Home with no success. I tried writing code manually using other libraries through platform I.O., but still nothing worked. I also tried to manually communicate to its registers through the I2C bus, but I only got zero values. I'm so frustrated with it that I'm going to give away some of these modules hoping that some of you might manage to solve this mystery. Like this video, comment and subscribe to not miss the giveaway. I will notify you on my YouTube channel for further details. On the other features of the Sprig, it's important to note that the accelerometer and battery level measurement IC communicate over I2C, meaning they don't use up additional GPIO pins, as the I2C bus is also accessible for external devices. Also, there is now an improved battery management system which includes an NDC thermistor to monitor the battery temperature. It's on the bottom of the board in case you place the battery below the sprig, but you can extend it or replace it with any 10K NTC. 
Other features include LED indicators for charging and down charging states, a reset button, a boot button, breakout pins for the 5V from USB and the stable 3.3V from the back boost regulator, and breakout pins with direct access to the battery terminals for potentially dangerous experiments. A major and simple upgrade was the addition of an on-off switch. This is located before the BMS, so by turning it off you have zero quiescent current consumption. While testing it, I realized the battery charging indicators were not working. Initially, I feared the BMS was faulty and was not charging the battery, but after some testing, I figured out that the LEDs were soldered backwards. That's a bit frustrating, but it was fixable with some patience. What was not fixable was the huge mistake I made by forgetting two crucial pull-up resistors on the USB communication pins. This means the board cannot charge when connected to a fast charging USB port, because it isn't recognized despite only needing 500 milliamps. The good news is that it charges successfully from all low power USB ports and as I said earlier I have dedicated breakout pins so I can use any external 5V supply to charge or power my device. I guess that's why they're called beta versions. Otherwise these are fully functional boards and you can get some of them from the links in the description below. All these features combined with support for smart home friendly protocols like Zigbee and the ever expanding range of expansion modules create a nice playground for experimenting with electronics, learning programming, creating smart IoT devices, hacking existing mounts, and most of all, staying in control. You can find dimensions and the pinouts of the Sprig, as well as sample codes for Home Assistant or my GitHub repo. I also regularly upload my tutorials and instructables. If you'd like to see more similar content, consider subscribing, purchasing my boards from my eShops, or buying me a coffee. Thanks for watching.